What happens if a human gets extra chromosomes? Anybody know what that's called? Sometimes kids are born with 48 chromosomes. Down's syndrome. It's a disadvantage. 46 chromosomes. Now, if we can just get two more chromosomes, we should be a tobacco plant. They have 48. They're, they're way ahead of us evolving. And you can see, obviously, tobacco and chimpanzees are, are twins, you know, identical. Um, dogs and chickens are also. They both have 78 chromosomes. Now, why would a chicken have more chromosomes than a human? And a fern has 480 chromosomes. And some evolutionists will argue, yeah, but the number of genes is different on these things. Okay, but they're missing the entire point. Probably intentionally, they're missing the point. But this textbook, and like most textbooks you have there in front of you, will try to show the kids that DNA similarities proves some kind of relationship. Here's what they've done. You take the chromosome of a human, let's say, and there's only four types of base pairs. I think they label them A, D, uh, I used to know the names of them. I'm going blank right now. But they give them a letter. Let's call it A, B, C, D. That's not the right letters, but it's close to that. They will take the sequence. Let's say, look, a human, the sequence, like the code, is... You know, A, B, C, D, D, A, B, A, C. And they put this long sequence of letters, okay? Then they line up the sequence of letters for a chimpanzee. And they find how many places do they match? Look at that. In the seventh column, they both got an A. Wow. And in the tenth column, they both have a B. Wow, that proves we're related. <laughs> I don't know how this logic got into there, but that's what they think. So they've compared these long sequence of letters. I guess they have nothing else to do with their grant money. And they compare these long sequence of letters and say, humans and chimpanzees are 98.2% similar. So when they say the DNA is similar, they're saying the sequence of these base pairs matched 98% of the time. Does that prove they're related? Absolutely nothing. This has nothing to do with relationship. The fact that all forms of life, or all these chromosomes, have the same four base pairs is like saying, you know, and they'll say, see, that proves evolutionary relationship. I would say, now, wait a minute. You can come to my library, and you'll notice all the books in there, written in English, have only 26 basic letters. Same 26 letters used over and over and over and over again. Aren't they? Does that prove they're related somehow? No, that proves that's the code you write words from. And the code you write chromosomes from is this base pair code, which proves the designer thought, you know, I'm going to make them similar so that the brown cow can eat the green grass and digest it. The code for life is pretty much the same. And some have argued that's evidence of evolution. No, no, no. That's evidence that the designer made it where we can, you know, eat and digest these things. If they, if they all had different codes, it wouldn't work. So if there weren't similarities of these uh, base pairs and of the amino acids and in the, in the chromosomes and the DNA structure and in the molecules and in the proteins, we couldn't digest anything else except other humans. That would be very unhandy after a couple of generations. So... They'll say, you know, orangutans are 96% similar. And the textbook shows the kids a graph here and says, see, this tells how many millions of years ago we evolved from a common ancestor. Well, that is just silly, okay? It doesn't prove we evolved from a common ancestor uh, 15 million years ago from a monkey group. It could prove we have a common designer and the same guy wrote these codes. Certain authors, when they write, they'll use certain words over and over again. And sometimes they have certain styles of writing, you know, these different authors do, but judging by that. Same DNA code would prove the same engineer wrote the codes, not evolution. Either they're not capable of thinking, maybe this proves a common designer, or they're running from that designer, like Romans chapter 1 tells us. They do not want to retain God in their knowledge. And so they only see it one way. Inferring conclusions. Boys and girls, we're going to learn how to infer conclusions here. How might the structure of plant cells be different if you bacteria had not evolved? Well, doesn't that question assume they evolved? You see how the propaganda is built right into the question. Suppose you've got a Christian student in this class who does not believe in evolution. He believes God made everything. How is he supposed to answer a question like that? 
What's he going to do for homework? How's he going to answer that question? He's really stuck. He's not learning to think critically. He's learning how to be taught what to think. Question 25. Inferring conclusions. If insects had not evolved wings, how would it have affected their invasion of land? <laughs> what a stupid question. Assuming, of course, they evolved wings. Look at this number 26. As you learned in chapter 2, all living things make proteins from the same 20 kinds of amino acids. Let's back up a little bit here. An amino acid is sort of like a letter of the alphabet. These amino acids are actually chemical compounds. 20 different types of amino acids are common in living organisms. They comprise about half the dry weight of every cell. Amino acids are the building blocks of larger molecules called proteins. And proteins are the primary components of every cell that has ever existed on the Earth. Proteins have a wide range of function in the cell, everything from structural requirements in terms of scaffolding of the cell, the cytoskeleton, to enzymes. Proteins do all the day-to-day -day jobs inside of the cell, making energy, moving things around, cleaning up the cell. And the earliest cells had to have those same proteins because they needed those same jobs done. So the proteins in the earliest cell and the proteins today were of the same type of complexity. The proteins in your body, you have protein for your fingernails, protein for hair, protein for eyeballs, protein for skin, protein for muscle. All proteins are made from the same 20 amino acids. That's a fact. Look what it says. Explain how this fact, and it is a fact, supports the idea that all life shares a common ancestor. And the proteins are all based on these 20 basic amino acids. And again, that's so the brown cow can eat the green grass, who gives the white milk, and I eat a churn it and get yellow butter, and I eat it and get blonde hair. Because these 20 amino acids get broken up like chopping up the letters of the newspaper and reassemble to make a new protein. So when I eat something, your body breaks it down and reassembles it into a new protein that you need. Scientists realize that the complex structure of protein molecules are keys to understanding how life on Earth began.